Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of Cameralabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Pentax K200D. Here it is, the K200D. Numerically, this may be the successor to the K100D, but this camera is much closer related to Pentax's former flagship, the K10D. It shares many of that camera's features, and I'll go over those in just a moment. Now, the K200D is an entry-level DSLR, and it's normally supplied with a budget kit lens, an 18-55mm model. But I've got the camera here mounted with the optionally available Pentax 18-250mm lens. This is a super zoom model, as you can see, look at that barrel really extending there, which gives you a great deal of compositional flexibility. It's also a pretty good quality lens, so if you're after a super zoom option for the K200D, I'd certainly recommend looking at this model. Now to the actual camera itself. The K200D actually employs exactly the same 10.2 megapixel sensor as the K10D. It also has exactly the same shake reduction facilities that are built into the body, which means they'll work with any lens you attach. Now, one of the things that the K200D doesn't have is live view, but it does have a number of quite unique features compared to other entry-level DSLRs. And the most important of those is its build quality. Now, most entry-level DSLRs have got mostly plastic bodies, and they feel quite lightweight. If you want something more substantial or something with weatherproofing, you're going to have to spend more and go for a semi-professional model. Not so with the K200D. This actually has a stainless steel chassis and no fewer than 60 ceilings that makes this dust, moisture and sandproof. So you can take this out under all sorts of conditions and it will be absolutely fine. Although for full weatherproofing, you will need a higher end sealed lens. So that's one of the first things that makes the K200D stand out against other entry level DSLRs. Let's take a look at some of those other features. On the upper right surface of the K200D, you'll find an LCD information screen. Now these are fairly common on semi-pro DSLRs, but it's a very unusual feature to find on an entry-level DSLR. And of course the advantage is the same as semi-pro models. These screens are very easy to see in direct sunlight, and they also don't consume as much power as using the main colour monitor on the back. So while you won't squeeze as much information on these screens, they do have certain advantages. To the side of the K200D's lens mount, you'll find a button inherited from the higher-end K10D and K20D models. It's a button dedicated to the RAW mode. If you press it, you'll switch the camera from JPEG to RAW plus JPEG mode, and you can also reconfigure that button in the K200D's menus. So it's a fairly unusual feature to find on those higher-end models, which makes it particularly unusual to find on the entry-level K200D. The vast majority of DSLRs run on proprietary lithium-ion rechargeable battery packs. Not so with the K200D though, this DSLR actually runs on four standard AA batteries. And obviously the great advantage of that is if you find yourself caught short with no power, in the middle of nowhere, it's relatively easy to find a spare set of AA's. Now Pentax doesn't supply rechargeables, with the K200D you'll need to supply your own, but it does come with a set of disposable lithium batteries and these offer a very long battery life. The K200D's continuous shooting speed is rated at 2.8 frames per second, which is slightly slower than most other entry-level DSLRs. The buffer will also only accommodate 4 or 5 frames, so here's how that sounds in practice. For a full rundown of the K200's features, head on over to our full review at Cameralabs.com. But now let's continue with the video tour by taking a look at the K200D's controls. On the upper left side of the K200D's body is the main mode dial, and you'll notice it has the SV sensitivity priority mode of the K10D and the K20D. This works like program mode, but lets you directly adjust the ISO sensitivity. To the upper right side of the camera, you'll find the shutter release button, and this dial here that switches it on and off. Twist it clockwise, you'll switch the camera on, you'd have heard a little shudder there as the K200D activates its anti-dust system. Twist it clockwise once more and you'll activate one of the preview modes. You can either go for an optical depth of field preview that you'll see through the optical viewfinder or I've got it set to digital preview here where it will actually take a picture so you can preview the settings that you've used and if you've inadvertently taken the perfect photo the K200D will let you save that. Now there's a thumb dial on the back and of course you can play around with the settings here. I'm in program mode and I can adjust that program, shift that, but if you think, oh no, I've actually ruined those settings, I want to go back to normal, just press this green button here and you'll see that it returns to the main program line. Around the back of the camera you'll find the usual four-way direction arrows, although you'll notice none of those double up for direct access to things like the sensitivity or the white balance. Below this, the switch that activates shake reduction. 
and also a function button which does allow you to adjust some of those popular settings and I'll show you how that works later on in the video. To the right side of the body you'll find the SD memory card slot and you'll notice this rubber surface here provides sealing against the elements. Underneath the cameras we've seen the battery compartment for the four double A's. This flap here allows you to attach an optional battery grip and to the other side of the body we've got the ports hidden here. One at the top for the remote control, below that one for the USB and TV output and below that a DC input. Power up the K200D and it will tell you what shooting mode you're in and also what various controls will do, for example pressing the OK button or turning the thumb dial. This page disappears after a few seconds but you can at any point press the info button on the back of the camera and it will show you all of the main shooting details including the focal length and the snapshot of the actual shutter speed and aperture at that moment. Notice that those settings are not updated in real time. To adjust some of the more popular settings you press the function button on the back. This allows you to adjust things like the ISO sensitivity. The white balance setting and notice you can fine tune any of those white balance presets. Press the OK button in the middle and you can see the K200D's custom image options. And this is where you can adjust the image processing. Here we're in the default bright option and it allows you to adjust things like the saturation, the hue, the contrast and the sharpness. And like the K20D there's two different sharpening increments you can choose. There's coarse increments or by turning the thumb dial you can go for finer increments. That's pretty impressive to find on an entry level camera. In playback you can of course zoom in on the picture and zoom back out again to display a series of thumbnails. Pressing the info button presents some basic shooting information and then a brightness histogram and by pressing the up or down keys you can toggle this between a brightness and a red, green and blue histogram. Press info button once more and you get a thumbnail of the main image plus some very detailed shooting information. Pressing the function button during playback presents a number of additional options. If you push left you can apply a variety of digital filters. You can go for a black and white, a sepia tone, various different colour options here and you can also adjust the intensity of those with the thumb dial. A softening filter, an illustration filter which goes for a kind of outline effect, an HDR simulation, a digital slimming filter and also the option to adjust the brightness of the picture. The other thing you can do from this function menu is process a RAW file into a JPEG within the camera. Push down to do that and it will say do you want to develop this image, press OK. And now along the right hand side you can see various options for that JPEG file that you're going to create. You can change the resolution, the JPEG compression, you can adjust the white balance. Even things like the saturation, the hue and the contrast and the sharpness. Then when you're ready, just press the OK button to save that as a new file. The Pentax K200D is certainly a very unique DSLR for its price point. While most entry level rival DSLRs are packing in the modern features like live view, contrast based auto focusing and face detection, the K200D has opted for a completely different approach. Most notably its build quality is far superior to other entry level DSLRs. This camera is seriously tough and it's also weatherproof. You don't normally get that kind of build quality unless you're willing to spend a lot more on a semi-pro model. So when choosing your DSLR it's very important to weigh up which features are most important to you. If you're after a lightweight DSLR with all of the latest gadgetry then the K200D is not the camera for you. If however you really value things like build quality and maybe things like the upper LCD information screen and its treatment on RAW and customization, then the K200D is certainly a very, very tempting model. And these features do allow it to really stand out in the marketplace. Now if you want some extra help comparing those features, head on over to our full review at cameralabs.com where we compared the K200D very closely against key rivals like the Canon EOS 450D or Rebel XSI and the Olympus E520. We've also compared its image quality against those models and if you head on over to the website you'll see that the K200D takes quite a unique approach to image processing. So I'd advise that you closely look at those images to see if they're the kind of output that you want from your DSLR. So as always if you want to find out more about this camera and whether it's the ideal DSLR for you head on over to its full review. You'll find it at www.cameralabs.com.